here today with my friend, Justin Prince, the one and only Justin Prince. Hello. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to do this with us. I know that you're building a business. I know that you're on high demand right now. You're such a you know, big influencer and leader in the entrepreneur community. And uh, for all of the people who don't know who Justin is, I will tell you, and you, you're going to hear from him obviously today, but I think I met Justin through social media, possibly. We just started connecting through mutual friends and I saw his success and just his content and, and everything that he was delivering as far as his messages. And it really resonated with me. And I'm like, this guy is onto something. Everything he's telling me is really helping me. I'm learning from him. And then I, I just called you one day and I said, hey, I would like to learn more from you. Can you coach me? <laughs> and so he agreed. So I was lucky enough to get some coaching from him, um, which I'm super grateful for. But Justin is a very successful entrepreneur. He's an international speaker and obviously a coach. And so Justin, why, why don't you tell everyone a little bit more about you and your story? Well, first of all, you're one of my favorite people. So what an honor to be uh, on with you and be able to share <laughs> with your audience. Your story is so inspiring and the human that you are, um, you know, the value that you add to so many people. So what an honor to be on with you and, and uh, excited you. to be able to chat with your people. So, you know, my wife and I are from, I'm from Salt Lake City, Utah. My wife and I have four kids. You know, I tell people I'm a daddy first, <laughs> you know, I'm a husband first, but from, uh, we have 16 down to seven. So bookend boys and then two girls in the middle. And uh, I really had no real formal professional background. My folks got divorced when I was 12. We moved 13 times in the next seven years. So those teenage years, I was making pizzas. I was lining ditches with rocks. I worked at a mall kiosk selling cartoon Bible movies. Like, I was the guy you tried to avoid at the mall, you know, like don't look at him, you know, <laughs> great and, sales uh, skill development though. Right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and you're, you're quick on your feet when that's happening. So, um, I was introduced to being in, I had a, a semester and a half of college. So no real formal professional background, no real, uh, formal educational background. But what I did have was big dreams, big goals. You know, I wanted to be somebody when I grew up, I remember when I was about 20, 22 or so, uh, driving in my, my, I had a white Toyota Corolla with a couple hundred thousand miles on it. And I was listening to an audio series with all these incredible speakers. It was actually a weekend. It was a weekend seminar with all these different, you know, motivational speakers. And uh, they were all there. It was Jim Rohn's event. Jim Rohn, for those of you that don't know Jim Rohn, he was actually Tony Robbins' original mentor. He is and, the mentor of all mentors. Yeah, oh, Jim Rohn. I mean, come on. He, just <laughs> he is. Mentors. Yeah, so he he gets on stage at the very end of this CD series. I've been listening to it for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. I've driven around in my car. I'm, I'm selling cartoon Bible movies for a living. I got a young family. And uh, Jim Rohn stands up and he says, we now have enough testimonials and enough personal experiences to conclude that it's possible to create and to design an extraordinary life. And I remember thinking to myself, I knew it was possible for other people to do it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I knew like all those speakers could do it. I just didn't know if it was gonna be possible for me. And when I was 25 years old, I was introduced to becoming an entrepreneur and kind of the short story, you, you know, it's funny. I, I try and make sure I share with people that it was not just straight up. Like my very first business failed, it left me below zero financially. At one point I moved my pregnant wife and our two babies into the loft of my wife's parents' garage. I was working two part-time jobs, chasing the dream, you know, to be free yeah. and build a business. And I was grinding and, you know, I, I was, I wondered many nights, like, you know, I'd lay in bed, I was midnight or one in the morning, I'd tell my wife, pitch black in the room, I'd say, am I crazy? Like, are you awake? She's like, yeah. She goes, are you awake? I said, yeah. I go, am I crazy? I go, am I chasing a fake dream? Like, is this all going to like be worth something at some point? And anyway, the short story is I went on and built four different multi-million dollar businesses. Uh, my current business has done over a billion dollars in revenue, which is crazy. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Huge We've, congrats. Uh, We're all striving to get there. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's been an amazing, amazing journey and ride. I've been able to speak, you know, in 20 plus countries around the world and speak to leaders and entrepreneurs, people just like you, um, you know, over a million people a day I'm able to talk to on social media. So it's turned into this, this experience where now I can share my own personal experience and my own testimonial. And I can share with you, regardless of where you're at on your journey, that your goals and your dreams are possible. Like I can write my name on that proverbial list, like encouraging you saying, yo, 
it's all possible. So, and I tell people, you don't need probable. You know, I feel like the odds were, if you will, stacked against me. Uh, Naria, the odds were stacked against you. You don't need, the, uh, it wasn't probable what you did, but it was possible. And all you need is possible. You don't need probable, you need possible. If it's possible for one, it's possible for many. Oh, I and, love uh, that. And, and I, I do want to touch on something you mentioned, because I think it's so important at that Jim Rohn um, event, right? Where you, where you heard that part and then you had the internal thoughts of, oh yeah, but this is for this certain type of people. Yeah. Like, is this really for me? And I feel like that's so powerful. And then here you are now there. And I'm sure that some of our listeners and audience are thinking possibly the same thing. And so just how important that message of just that belief that yes, you can. And so can you, and so can anyone who creates the possibility, like you just said, I just think that's beautiful. I completely agree. I think that um, it all starts with that dream, the thought, the vision. Um, you know, it, you go from thought into words, words into emotions, emotions into, you know, actions, hopefully into habits that are, uh, that are habits that are serving you. And so it all starts with the dream, the vision, you know, um, what they've been saying recently, the most recent research, check this out, Nuria, this is really, I think it's really profound that your words have 10 times the impact of your thoughts. So your thoughts are powerful, no question about it, but your words have 10 times the impact of your thoughts. Now, here's what the research from Christine Porath and the latest from Georgetown and Harvard, it says that your negative words have four to seven times the impact of your words. So in other words, if you think something, that's one thing. You know how it is, like sometimes you just have stuff bouncing around in your head all day long. Yeah. But if you speak it, it has, four, if it's negative, it has 40 to 70 times the impact of it either coming true or happening or having a negative impact on your life. So man, the words that we speak, the you know, language, the we powerful, but then the language is super powerful. Wow. And especially during this time, right? Um, it's funny enough, I talked about that in my morning show today a little bit, you know, and I want to dive deeper into the part of language. I didn't know that it had that negative, that much negative power. Um, I didn't realize those statistics. So thanks for sharing that. And I mean, during this time, you know, you just shared a great nugget um, of everything that you just mentioned. But during this time, you know, everyone's going through the process. Everyone's going through all the emotions. I'm sure you felt the emotions just like I felt the emotions. And maybe we just have different tools or some techniques that we're used to like letting them flow and not get stuck in, in them. Right. Um, but as far as, you know, what would you say that the top three things are that you could share with entrepreneurs across the nation of what are some specific things that they could actually start doing that would really help them get through this whole pandemic that's going on? Yeah. So let me start by saying this. And I think this is an ownership thing for us as, as leaders and as entrepreneurs. There's an old saying that says stars shine brightest in the darkest nights. So the first concept is why does it happen? One is that the nights are dark. My friend, the more fear, the more stress, the more uncertainty, the more doubt, the more pressure people are under. Then the second thing is it, the darker the night is. The second thing is the stars shine the brightest. Why? Because they shine brighter. You know I what I'm saying? I love that. I love that. This is like our moment. Like this is your moment literally to step up and, and to establish yourself in your your niche market, whatever that might be for you as, as a leader and as an authority, as someone that shines bright in the darkest night. So um, Winston Churchill said to the people of England in the most devastating times of World War II. Now, it's easy to talk about this kind of stuff later because here we are, you know, this is in 1941 when he said this. So here we are 80 years later, you're like, it's easy to, it's easy to put it off that, you know, that was a long time ago. When this was happening, Nazi Germany was bombing all of Britain. Like they didn't know Britain was, it was gonna be completely pummeled. It was gonna be like, they didn't know if they should uh, retreat or surrender or what the heck they should do. And Winston Churchill said to every man, and I believe he meant every woman, right? To every man, there comes that <laughs> special moment when they're figuratively tapped on the shoulder and offered the chance to do a special thing. Something that's unique to them and fitted to their talent. He then said, what a tragedy. If that moment, that special moment, finds them unprepared or unqualified for the work, that will be their finest hour. So the point is, this oh. is your moment. This is like, this is your like tap on the shoulder. And Maria, I was sharing with this with you a few minutes ago. I love what, I feel like you've stepped up even more. And this is, guys, 
in the history of humanity, we've never had everyone home more ever. And we've also yeah. never had everyone more plugged into social more ever. This is right. Cause they just didn't exist back didn't, then. We were all right. busy. We were all going hundred miles an hour two, three weeks ago. Right. So now everyone's home and everyone's on social. The point is this is your, this is that special moment where it's a dark night and you get to shine brighter. So I, I have three just practical things that I've been doing and three practical things I hope that maybe you'll consider implementing. First thing is yes. this, is limit your news and social media consumption right now. Um, oh, so good. The news is designed, it's wired to tap into uh, the negative part of your brain. Because remember, your brain's not designed for positive. Your brain's designed for negative. In other words, the way that we were wired was to scan and find the negative, what's wrong with the world, versus to scan and find what's right. You, act you actually have to intentionally find what's right because your brain will instantly find what's wrong. I'll give you as an example. When we were cavemen, you know what I'm saying? Cavemen, it would have been like <laughs> however many years ago. When you woke up in the morning and you like rolled back the rock, you didn't walk out and be like, oh my gosh, like, honey, oh my gosh, kids, come look at this. The sun is glistening off the lake. That's not what you said. <laughs> you, know what you, said? you said like where, you like walked out and you started scanning and you're like, where's the saber tooth tigers? Where's the rattlesnakes? Where's the cliffs? Like, could any rocks fall on me? Like, what's the temperature? <laughs> Like you found everything. Survival wrong. mode. Yes. Yeah. You, why? <laughs> it's, it's self-preservation. It's what you said. It's survival mode. Like you instantly got into like, I've got to stay alive. So your brain's wired that way. So when, when you read news headlines that say shocking or surging or exploding or whatever it is, like these, it's, it's all clickbait. It's all language that they know how to tap in because they're paid for views, right? They're paid for your attention. So the point I'm saying to you is this. Listen to the experts, wash your hands. I mean, you know, socially distance, all that stuff. <laughs> but you can learn that stuff in five or 10 minutes. Like listen to the experts. You don't need to listen to the pundits take on what the experts say. Just listen to the experts. Thank do you. Do your homework, that. boom, you're done, right? You don't need to sit there and just get drowned. I, you know, when this first thing was starting, I remember, you know, I run a, a large business and I run a large team. And I remember I was one of the mornings I woke up and I was just like watching a bunch of like YouTube clips trying to catch up on the news. And it just felt like, just felt heavy and like debilitating. And I almost felt like, like, like I felt a lack of motivation. I was just kind of like, you know, what's the point? And all of a sudden I just literally had to like smack myself. Like, psh, you know, I was like, dude, snap out of this. Like, what are you doing? Because the uninspired can't inspire and to inspire, you must be inspired. Like my friends, your, your people need you right now to raise your vibration, your frequency to, ins to be inspired or else you can't inspire your market. You can't inspire your audience. You can't serve at a high level. If you're completely uninspired, if your plate is empty or your well is out of water, you can't give water to anyone else. So number one right now is, is I'd limit the negative limit, social media, limit your media consumption. Second thing. And this leads, this leads, once you lower the negative voice, I would double down on your personal development. Like this is your time to get into a good book, get into a good podcast, Heck Yes. Uh, get into some positive YouTubes. Like this is your time to double down on your personal development. Like, not like maintain or let it slip. I'm talking like, yo, double down the time you're putting into it because you need to get inspired. You know, it was funny that day when I was feeling kind of heavy and unmotivated and stuff, I was thinking to myself, like, how am I supposed to lead people right in this, in this emotional state? And most of us have, Tony Robbins probably says it best. He says, mo uh, um, your emotional state is where you live. So where you live is not where you live. Where you live emotionally, the state you live in. Is, are you a state of pissed, fearful, you know, angry, or a state of gratitude, humility, and, and uh, passion, right? Yeah, he'll, he'll call you out and say, like, you're going home. There's your home. Yes, you know? that's like, so you, true. You to that emotion. So check this out, Naria. He says it this way, and this is so true. He said, most of us have a freeway to pissed and a dirt road to grateful. Like, in other words something happens and you instantly go to fearful, pissed, stressed, and, and annoyed versus grateful, passion, overcoming in control. It's because you go, you go back to the, as you said it, you go back to that home of where you live emotionally. And wow. so right now, this is the time you double down your personal development so that you, you're, you're the one that's inspired your uh, social media viewerships up 40%. There's 40% more people online right now. Like guys, this is your time to like build your brand, build your business, um, add value to your contacts. You know, when, with, your, with your, uh, your clients or your prospective clients, this is such, you want to always look for excuses to stay in touch. Excuses meaning birthdays and anniversaries and mm -hmm. holidays. Right now, it's a great, to your clients or your prospective clients, you, call, you write them a message and say, hey, look, 
I'm thinking of you. How's your family doing? How's your business doing? How, how are your kids hanging in there? How's your wife or your husband doing? Like, this is your moment. Yeah, to it's like, a genuine conversation of like, how are you? How can I help you? you yes. know, like, how can I serve you? How can I add yes. value? I've been doing it to a bunch of my business owner friends. Dude, what's going on? How can I add value? I, I've been sending messages like crazy. Not for any other reason other than I genuinely care. Absolutely. And this is my time to, to be inspired and to, and to hopefully inspire the uninspired, right? And then the third thing is this. I'm going to encourage you guys to go public. Like what I mean by that is live video. If you're not using live video, my friend. <laughs> now, obviously we're all on Zooms now, right? But yeah. like live on Facebook, live on Instagram. If you want to do TikTok, like, like in other words, yo, like you got to get in front of the camera right now. You, like this is your chance to start adding value to your audience, to start uh, uh, establishing your personal brand. I'm telling you, this is, your, this is that special moment when you're figuratively tapped on the shoulder and people do business with people they know, like, and trust. This is your chance to build know, like, and trust, to build authority and credibility and relationships with looking people eye to eye in the camera. So those would be my three things I would, I would encourage you guys to be doing right now is limit your social media and your media, you know, your, your news consumption, double down on your personal development, and then go live, go public, be in front of the camera, use your stories, use your, Nuria, you've been crushing hard on like your TikTok videos, for example. <laughs> And they're funny. They're, they're, they're not like you're teaching some big business lesson. They're funny. It's yeah. ingenious. As I just people, want to bring a smile to people. And that's I'm what I'm saying. saying. People need to smile right now. They need to laugh. They need to like loosen up the, like the intensity of it, the heaviness of everything. So I think that's ingenious of you to do that. So I, I, I've been loving watching what you're doing. Thanks. I just do it for fun. And I'm like, oh, and then I'll share it. You know? And plus you got like the Latin, you like, you got like the Latin... <laughs> All the Latin, the Latin moves, Latin like all the spies. dance moves, you know? Yes. <laughs> so that, that's, that's a little unfair. The rest of us didn't get that. <laughs> it's in my blood. It is in your blood. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I, I love that you touch on that, you know, and I think that that third one and go public, I think that so many people are afraid of that. And I, you and I both know that. And you've really mastered this area, you know, doing the live videos and doing, um, a lot of content online where as a lot of people that have never had to, you know, if they're going to take your advice and actually go for it, I think it's definitely uh, something to be fearful of. And I, I just want to, I want to share this from my perspective and I'd love for you to obviously give them the tips from yours, but this is what I've been thinking lately. You know, I, during this whole situation that's going on, and I'm being careful and I'm being smart and taking all the preventative steps. But if I know that, you know, there's chances where people will not live. And I know that I, got, I have a gift inside of me and I have messages to share with the people and I am not sharing the message that I know that people need to hear. That to me is a huge failure and a huge like disservice to the people. And so that's where my creativeness has come, you know, to be even doubling down on this stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh no way. <laughs> you know, like I am going down. Like, you know, if that's the, uh, that's an, uh, a possibility, I truly believe that I'll be okay. Right. But it really is in the top of my mind of like, I am not going down not like giving my gift to others, you know? And so if you're listening to this and you're at home or in your car or at home, <laughs> really, because everyone's there and you're, and you're thinking, oh my gosh, but I'm afraid to do a video. Like, how do I go public? Like Justin's mentioning, you know, maybe that thought process will help you. Like you can't not share your gift and this is the time that you should. And then what would you like to add Justin to that when people are afraid? Well, I think one of the biggest challenges we have is we say things like, who am I? Like, like, who am I to go live? Like, what am I, to, like, who am I to like go talk about something or add value? Or we get either self-conscious, like we get in, in you know, uh, into our own, like people are going to make fun of me. And plus, I don't know, you know, like, like, like I'm not like a social media influencer and we have all of this kind of self-doubt. And also it's what the technical term is what's called imposter syndrome. Imposter yeah. syndrome is like, yo, I feel like an imposter pushing the live button. Like, who am, <laughs> like, I, to, who am I to do this? <laughs> yeah, who am I to say all this stuff, you know? Yeah. And going back to what Naria said, who are you not to do it? Because like, there's people, you have life experience and insights and perspective. Plus, you're a professional in your, in your field. 
I'll give you an example. Let's say you're in real estate right now. Just I'll use real estate as our example. If you're in real estate right now, man, I'd be like, I'd be like doing market updates. I'd be like giving insights into what's selling, what's not selling into the trend lines of what's happening, what's happening in mortgages. Like talk to us, like share with, because you're a real estate professional. You know, the market, you know, you're studying the market. Well, look, there's people, you know, lay, lay consumers, lay people like me that are saying, so what's up? Where's the opportunities right now in the market? What should I be avoiding? What are some of the pitfalls you're seeing people do? What, what are you seeing um, people, what they can do to like raise the value of their home right now? Like, like give it, like share your insights with people, right? So you have insights, perspective, knowledge that the rest of us need to hear. That's the first thing I'd share. And I think that's so good because I just real quick, a side note on that. A lot of people, I think that whatever field we're in and, you know, you touch real estate, which I'm in, we assume that people just know these things and they're getting so much just wrong information out there that we can't assume that people know what we know. So it's so good that you just said that. I think a lot of people really miss that boat. Guys, <laughs> let me share this. We get in our own little bubble sometimes where we like, we talk to like all of the other agents or all the other brokers or like, in other words, we're in our, our like all the title company. Like we talk, we're in our little our little bubble. Hey, the rest of us out here in the real world, we're not in your bubble, dude. Like you need to come out of your bubble and talk to the rest of us. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. the same thing's true of my business. Like I kind of get niched down into my little world and I know what's going on in my space. You guys, like you guys would have no clue what's going on in my, in my world. The point that I'm trying to share is, is, is get outside of yourself. This is, by the way, this leads me to my next point is I want to encourage you to get out of thinking about you. Like where it's, it's, this is actually not about you <laughs> right now. Like you're like, what about me? Like, do I have something in my teeth? Like, are people going to make fun of me? Think of where the focus is. It's all about you, 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 you. It's like all inwardly focused. I want to encourage you to start thinking outwardly. Like where you're thinking like, how can I serve? How can I add value? What can I do to, to help people, to help the people. Them, inspire people and like to be, to help them to be better. That's what I want you to focus on right now. Like it's all focused on you. I'll give you guys an example. You're like, well, you know, I get discouraged. I only had 21 views. Okay. Let me ask you guys a question. If, if an airliner were to crash today in the United States and 21 human beings lost their lives, that's 21 moms, dads, kids, people with futures, people with grandparents. I mean, guys, it'd be a national tragedy. We'd all be like, it'd be on the news. It would just be like, this would be terrible. We'd all like, you know, we'd, they'd have candlelight vigils, the whole thing. Why? Because that's 21 people, dude. That's 21 lives, the impact of those people's lives and lives they could have lived and so on. My point is, if you have 21 views, that's 21 human beings that watched your stuff, right? Like, in other words, 21 people that you had a chance to pour into, you had a chance to influence, you had a chance to inspire, you had a chance to, to share some stuff that's going to help them be a better mom, a better dad, a better member of their community, more informed, more educated, like, more empowered like this like my point is don't so don't let the numbers like my son's 16 and he, he has his own podcast and youtube and so on and he's like yeah my you know i only got x amount of views i'm like yo bro i don't want you to even think about that way i want you to think about it like show up and serve and then over time you like you get better at what you do and over time the audience will follow you know your consistency <laughs> you know what i'm saying like stuff yeah. all you showing up so i'm just going to encourage you guys remember people do let me talk to you very practically people do business with people when all things are equal Nuria, there's two title companies and, and all things are equal, meaning there's two companies, equal distance to me, whatever. Like I can, I can get either one, but I know, like, and trust you and I don't know them. I have no relationship with them. It's not even a question of who I'm going to pick. Yeah. I'm gonna pick you. Why? Because I know you, like you, trust you. I, I, you. I have relationship with your personal brand. Your brand, by the way, is not your logo. It's not your image. Your brand is how you make people feel. So when they're around you, they watch your content, they engage Amazing. with you, they, they feel inspired, they feel educated, they feel informed, they feel empowered, they feel, um, they, they laughed, you know, they, they thought it was fun, they thought it was funny, like, they, they, they thought, man. That's you a mic drop right there, like, <laughs> mic drop. Uh, can you just repeat that one more time, because that is so powerful. Yeah, so your brand is not your logo or an image, your brand is how you make people feel. And Boom. I want you to be thinking about that, like, like how, how am I showing up? You know, am I, am I adding to the fear or am I adding to the, to the clarity, you know, and the certainty people are looking for? So anyway, I shared just a couple quick thoughts to say, not, you know, get over your imposter syndrome. It's not about you in the first place. It's, it's about you serving the way you're going to attract more clients, build your business bigger 
is by building your personal brand. Jay-Z said, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Like this is the era of the personal brand. And you want to be, be that person that becomes an authority and an expertise in your space. Awesome. Hey, um, to end our show, I do want to ask you one final question. And I, you've obviously been doing this for many years and you've mastered you know, your area and in, in this business and you're influencing people and you're helping people rise and you're helping people think differently. And so inspiring. Um, the question is, what would you tell your 20 year old self if you could go back and give yourself some advice? Oh, man, I've, you know, it's funny. One of the reasons I started doing live video years ago was I literally wanted to go back and like mentor my prior self, like my younger self. And <clears throat> I didn't have any mentors in those early years. Um, I probably would tell them to, to think bigger sooner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like That's think bigger sooner, take more risk earlier. Like, like I would probably tell them like, yo, get into business. Like right now, like don't wait five more years. Like, let's go. Like, like I tell them to think bigger sooner. That's probably what I tell them. It's like, think bigger sooner. So the book, Thinking Grow Rich, or uh, the book, uh, Magic of Thinking Big, I'm sorry. So he, he, you can summarize the whole book in seven words. You are what you think you are. And so yeah. I would have just told him like, look, you got greatness within you, bro. Like, let's go. And I'd tell that to all of you. Like, you already have the greatness within you. The challenge is to ignite it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, I tell him to think, think bigger sooner is, is probably the best advice I'd give. That's amazing. Any last thoughts you'd like to share before we finalize our yeah, amazing I mean, time together? Yeah, what I would share with you guys is this. Um, I would, and I, and I mean this, it's not a self plug to, to Nuri, I mean this, I mean this dead, dead sincere, is um, I would be very proactive right now about following people like Nuria because she's adding value. She's got a success story that wasn't probable, mm -hmm. you know, that she really made things happen. Like I'd be, I'd be intentional about it. Remember, uh, getting, you, you can, you're, we're all going to get older, but so getting older just happens by accident, but to grow and to really make your life go forward, that takes intentionality. And part of that is who you hang out with. And so even though you may not physically, in this case, hang out with Maria, you can virtually hang out with her, get into her head, her insights, her perspectives. And so that's what I'd share with you is, is be very intentional about who you're hanging out with right now, you know, and, you. and um, make sure you're really intentionally choosing positivity right now because the world needs you to step up your game, step up your vibration, step up your leadership and to shine a lot brighter during this kind of challenging, stressful, dark night for people. Thank you so much, Justin. I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that are going to want to continue to follow you. Uh, maybe, you know, hop on some of your webinars and a lot of the, amazing, amazing messages that you're giving out there. So if somebody does want to, you know, follow you and, and, and get some of your content, where can they reach you at? Where are you on social media? Tell us. Yeah. So if you go to IamJustinPrince.com, I A M I am JustinPrince.com has all my social handles. You get, I'll give you a free copy of my, of my book. Um, Woo! yeah. And I'm here to, you know, see if I can add value to you guys, serve you in any way that I can. So, uh, so I am justinprince.com is where we can, we can connect and we can connect from there in all the social channels. Perfect. Justin, thank you so much for your time. You've been absolutely wonderful. Uh, we are very lucky to definitely have had you on my podcast. So thank you for all Love of our best. listeners. Appreciate and you inviting time. me. Stay being a light guys. Be a light. I love it. Have a great day, everyone. Thanks. Talk soon. Bye.